folks, here we are yet again, showing you more cool things you can do in Illustrator. I'm Jason Hoppy, and today, the Width Shape Tool. Now, the Width Shape Tool is amazing. It is one of those tools that it's very simple, but it's also amazing what you can do with it. Now, I call it the Chicken Skewer Tool, and the reason why is because if you look at that icon right there, it looks like a chicken with a skewer in it. That is the Width Shape Tool, and Shift W is the way you get to that really quickly and easy. So hit Shift W on your keyboard and there's the Width Shape Tool. Now the Width Shape Tool is used on the path of a line or a closed shape. It doesn't matter which um, one it is. It could be a closed or open shape. And in the simplest terms, what it does is it changes the width profile of a line. Let me jump back to my selection tool and talk to you about what the width profile actually is. When you click on a line, you can see up here in your control bar that you have the stroke, you have the color, you have the size of your stroke, and then you have this thing called uniform. Well, this is your width profile, and a uniform profile means that if you have a 12-point line, it will be 12-point along the entire line. Whether it's a closed or open shape doesn't make any difference. Drop down the menu here and you can get different width profiles where you can have a line that's a 12 point line that's tapered from nothing to 12 points to nothing. And these are presets, okay? You can control how these presets work. You can have an angle, you can have a taper, you can have all sorts of things. You can have a little mound. These are all width profiles. Now, you can choose from the presets here, but you can also make your own using the width shape tool. So I've selected the line with my selection tool. I'm going to hit Shift W to get to my width shape tool. And I get to my cursor with a little wavy line underneath it. And I'm ready to go ahead and control the profile of my line. It doesn't matter where you click on your shape or your line. You can click anywhere. If I simply go to the end and pull away from that, you're going to see that I will begin to change the size of my line. Now, I am using the most current version of Illustrator, which is 2021, and they've cleaned up their tool hints a little bit in 2021. And what's nice is it's telling me how much the overall width of my line is and how much I'm actually adding to each side of that line. Once I change my width profile, you can see that it goes and shows up in my new variable width profile drop-down menu. Now, if I'd like to go to the other end here, I can click on this and I can pull it apart, but I can also push it together here where I run it right down to zero, kind of creating a pointed line. If at any point I would like to change the profile in the middle here, I simply select anywhere on the path and I can then pull that out to make it wider, or I can click on those given handles and pull it in, push it in to make it narrower. And I can do that all along the line here to create some really interesting shapes. So if I want to create kind of like this fish shape, I just started off with a very basic line. Now you'll notice when I pull in and out here, it kind of changes the profile of the line here. Just think of this if you're stretching a piece of elastic or fabric here. When you pull one direction here, it's going to kind of change the fabric because it's all somewhat connected. Now, if you like the profile of this line that you've created and you'd like to save this because you'd like to apply this to any other line, it's very simple to do. Go up to your Width Profile drop-down menu, go down to the bottom and click the little Add to Profiles, little Save to Hard Drive right there. And then you name it whatever you'd like to name it here. I'm going to name it Fish because it looks like a fish and I'm going to click OK. Now. Let's talk about how we apply these profiles. So this fish profile that I just created here by clicking and dragging further out, closer together at different points of the line with the Width Shape tool, this is kind of interesting. So now what happens if I want to apply this to a longer line? I'm going to go back here. I'm going to grab my line segment. And I'm going to draw a much longer line. Now I'm going to go to my profile and I'm going to scroll down to my fish right here and I apply this and it looks like nothing happened. Well. Here's the problem. This width profile is applied to a line that is one point wide. So you're really not seeing much you know, profile happening because the widest point right here is one point. As you begin to add stroke weight to your line, you're going to notice that this is now going to become more and more pronounced. And the reason why is because this width profile is based on a certain size line. 
So if I bump up the profile width to say 50 points, I get this, but it doesn't really look the same as here. And the reason why is because the width profile is going to go over the entire length of the line. So if I go to my selection tool and I click on here and I change the width of my line here, you notice that the overall profile is going to change drastically. Okay, now it looks like a fish. And the reason why is because that profile is going to be extended over the entire length of the line. So you're not going to see what you think is going to be the exact same results every time you work with this width profile. It's going to have a lot to do with the overall length of the line or the entire length of your shape that's making up your entire closed shape, but also to the stroke weight too that you have on the line. You're going to get more pronounced or less pronounced if you have a higher stroke weight or lower stroke weight. Now it's interesting too, if you go over to your properties panel, you'll notice that once you apply a width profile to a line, you can also choose from all of your presets here, but you can also flip along the line too. So instead of having to go in and rotate your line, you can just simply use the flip along the profile and it's going to flip your shape for you. Now, let's take a look at this. This line that I had and I created here had just basic blunt ends. And by the way, if you ever want to get rid of the profile of a line, simply go back into your width profile in your control bar or in your properties panel and go back to uniform. And it's going to go back to a uniform weight line. Okay, apply that and you get your shape back. Now I'm going to apply the exact same profile to a, a stroke or a line that I have here, but the difference is, is that in my stroke, I didn't have just the blunt ends, I rounded the ends, hot dogging the ends, which is what I call it. Now if I apply this width profile to something that has different end caps to it, I'm going to get a profoundly different shape. When I do this and I apply that to it, you can see when I add this to it, that the end profile kind of gives me a bulb, very different, and now it starts to look like a paddle, okay? And the reason why is that all I did was I just simply changed the end cap to the butt cap or the hot dog, the ends, and so I get this bulb kind of coming out. Now, the more you pinch a line together, if you have a hot dog end at the end, basically as you pinch this together, it's very much like pinching a balloon. The end of the balloon is going to bulge or pooch out, okay? We don't get it on this end because the width profile is down to zero. So no matter what cap we use on an end when we've pulled it completely together, cinched it together, I'm not going to see any difference. But you'll notice that as I beef up the stroke weight here, that round end gets exponentially large compared to the rest of the line. So that's something to think about. And all that is, is in your stroke panel, just changing how the cap works, okay? And you're going to get a very distinctly different look and feel when you apply your width profile. We can do this with a curve here as well. Shift W is gonna give me my width shape tool. I can go and I can pull this out. And this makes a nice kind of like swirl mark or something. And then I, of course I could take those and I could rotate those around if I wanted multiples coming around, kind of showing like a swirl. So if I took these, rotated these around like this, kind of did that, I could create this kind of swirl effect. Now I'm going to go into outline mode, which is under the view menu, which is command or control Y. And you can see that these are all appearance or effects on these lines. These lines really do not look like this because when I use the width shape tool, it is a profile or an effect, which is something that you definitely want to know about because if you want to edit those lines or edit the shape further, you need to turn those into a shape, which we're going to get to. So some interesting things. When I use a width profile on a closed shape, Shift W gives me my width line here. I can go in and I can do something like this and kind of make a ring out of this right here. This is really odd. It never used to do this before. Um, it should give me like two perfect circles right here. Let me try over here. Oh, that's interesting. It's kind of like pooching that out. So this is an interesting way if you wanted to create like an offset ring. You can go in and click anywhere on it. It doesn't have to be one of the points here. I could click anywhere here and I can taper these lines in or out and do whatever I want and get some kind of, you know, like strangulated kind of line here. Kind of crazy, okay? Not that you would ever go through and do this, but it doesn't matter where you click on the line to go ahead and use your width shape tool. It doesn't have to be on any of the points. It can be in the middle of nowhere, and then you get this interesting ring. 
What's cool with this is if you use this on a spiral, this could be really nice. Shift W, I'm going to pull this out here, and you can see how you can really control the width of the spiral overall. So it can then spiral into nothing and create kind of like this wispy, ethereal, kind of dramatic, um, kind of cartoony vine kind of thing, which could be very cool. Again, doing it on another closed shape here, Shift W, I can click anywhere, I'll just click on one of the points here, and I can now get some type of really cool, you know, kind of like offset, you know, parallelogram kind of shape too. So interesting things you can do. Now, I'm gonna show you, go back to just a standard line here, and I'm gonna show you some of the things we can do to kind of beef up our interest in the line here. So if I grab the Width Shape tool, and I click and pull, I'm going to get equal distances on both sides of the point that I pull. If I click on any other location, I can push and pull right here. But if I'd like to exaggerate one of my pull handles here longer than the other, where I don't want to get the symmetry when I pull on this, I don't want both sides to expand or contract or get wider or narrower, I'm going to hold down Option or Alt. When I do that, this allows me to pull one handle separately, and I actually can retract it all the way back in completely so that I don't have that handle. So if I do that, I can get just one handle out the side, and that allows me to then pull that one handle separately to get a very exaggerated or very offset kind of width profile. So it's interesting that I could go in and I could do some sort of curve with this. And again, remember, this has the rounded ends, and I'll show you what it looks like when I just cap the ends. It's a very different profile. So what's interesting with this, when I use the Width Shape tool, I can get a very interesting kind of blade-like profile without having to go in and actually draw a shape. Remember, this is just a line. It's just a single stroke. And that can be changed. The whole profile can be changed as I reduce the stroke weight or increase the stroke weight right here. That's a very interesting way to create a curved looking shape just from a basic line. And again, if I go under my view menu or use command or control Y, you can see that this is just a very basic line. This has nothing to do with a fill. It has everything to do with a stroke or the line of what you're working on. Now, if you did want to then turn the, any of these into a shape to manipulate further, you can take any of these, go into the object menu, and you can do two things. You can either go in and choose expand appearance, which is going to expand the appearance, because this is just a line and it appears like a fish. If I expand the appearance, now it's going to become an actual shape where it has gone in and actually become that shape. I've expanded the appearance, so it no longer is just a line that looks like that, it actually is that line. If you don't want to use the expand appearance, you can go under path and you can choose outline stroke, which is going to do the same thing. It's going to take that stroke and it's going to outline it and it's going to then give you that overall shape as an actual shape. Once you have an actual shape then, of course, then you can apply a stroke to it. Now, every time you apply a stroke to something, guess what? You can use your width shape tool on the stroke. So this started off as a line. I used my width shape tool to give it this fish profile. I converted that line with that effect into the actual shape. I then applied a stroke to this shape. I'm gonna hit Shift W and I'm going to come in here and I can actually then go in and I could apply a profile to that line overall to get more of a dramatic kind of offset shape. Because every time you add a stroke to an object, doesn't have anything to do with the fill, you can go in and use your Width Shape tool. So this could be very cool. So there it is, use my Width Shape tool. I'm just gonna pull this a little bit wider here, give it a little bit more dramatic effect, and kind of looks uh, a little stylized here. Maybe go in and kind of pinch this a little bit closer here. And now I've got my fish shape, a wider stroke, and that stroke is continuous and it's variable all the way around that stroke. So. It's a really interesting way to be able to go in and change the profile of a singular line. And you begin to create a whole bunch of different styles of things just simply from taking the stroke weight of a line and then making it more dramatic. So this, if I go under Object, Path, Outline Stroke, it now turns into kind of this little swish. I'm gonna add a stroke to this here, maybe a darker blue. 
kind of create a water droplet here. I'm going to beef up the stroke. And then if I want to make this more dramatic, let's zoom in right here. Nope, I want to make this more dramatic here. Dark blue, great. Shift W. And then I can taper this to be really wide. I can taper this to be much more narrow here if I want to, or widen that. Again, you have to be careful because sometimes it's not continuous as you go all around because these points, um, this is where <laughs> this is where the shape actually connects right here. But I can go in and I can adjust the profile around certain areas here to kind of bring these areas in and kind of taper the line smaller all around there and create a very interesting dramatic effect. All with the, with the shape tool. It's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward, but the type of creations that you can get out of this can be very dynamic and very compelling. Again, it can only be done to the actual stroke of an object. So, if you have an object here that has no stroke on it whatsoever, okay, and just a fill, right here, and you try to go in and use the width shape tool and you do this, nothing's gonna happen, okay? Because it has nothing to do with the fill. It has only to do with the stroke. So nothing's gonna happen here. All of a sudden it's like, hey, you can't do anything. Yeah, because the stroke is set to zero. If you have no stroke, nothing's gonna happen. Once you apply a stroke to it, even the smallest bit of stroke, then the width shape tool, you can then bring in, and now you can make it a whole lot more dramatic as well. So, kind of cool and interesting. So, something to think about. One last thing here, if you wanna be super precise with the way your points are, you can see when I went in and I dragged this out here, I don't, I don't have anything. I can't hold down shift and have that snap to a certain size. If I come in here and I double click on any one of my points here, I can then go in here and I can very specifically set the sides at a very given size. So if I want one side here to be eight and I want this one to be four, I can do that with a total width of 12. I can control that, okay? Without going in and trying to drag these points wherever they need to be. So just double click on that point with the width shape tool, calls up um, your box right here and you can edit those. You can also delete that as well where you just go in and you just take that setting off that point or if you drag here, double click on that point where you dragged from, set the very specific sizes so that you can be extremely precise in what you do. And then you can also go in and say adjust adjoining width points here, which will give you a very smooth blend all around this instead of having it pinch at one point and then having the next point be all by itself. Um, you can have it so that it basically blends smoothly through all the points right there. So a lot of cool things you can do with the width shape tool. Fun and interesting. Give it a shot. See what you think. Check out my other videos too because there's so much good information in these things. And um, can't wait to see you back for the next one.